All right, so um, so good morning. Um, it's a few minutes. Uh, we're still a little early, so we'll give the ladies uh, a little bit of time to come in. But good morning, good morning, good morning, wherever you are. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. I don't think y'all can hear it, but I'm playing what we call uh, soaking music on my side. And soaking music is just uh, worship music that kind of puts you in the, I don't know, in the, in the I don't want to say mentality. It just kind of puts you in the in a different mood for worship. Sometimes, um, sometimes, you know, worship music is loud, and you know, there's sometimes sometimes you want you need like the the kind of songs that's going, you know, really speak to your soul, right? So um, sometimes it's that, but sometimes it's it's the songs or the music that speaks to your spirit. It's a little bit different. There's no words. It just gives you a chance to um, connect with the Holy Spirit in a different way. And so I encourage you, soaking music, you can find um, soaking music just about anywhere. Um, this is uh, songs that I found on, uh, I use Amazon Music. So as you're doing your own personal worship, um, if you're looking for uh, a song that, songs that are just um, getting you into that mindset of, of pure worship without the words. Like cause sometimes the words of a song can kind of, um, I don't know, sometimes it distracts me from, <laughs> from here. Maybe that's just my problem. Um, but soaking music is definitely one of the ways that you can do that. So that's just a little, little bit of a share for everybody. So yeah, so like I said, we'll, We'll give we'll give folks a chance to join and look if it's just me and y'all on the replay that's okay too <laughs> okay all right we're getting into this week and this happy Monday so on this side I'm going to be listening to soaking music a little bit longer and um, and just getting us ready for worship God is so good y'all. That is so good. All right. So um, to honor everybody's time, we start at 630. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and get us started um, for today. So, Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence. Lord, we thank you for uh, this new day, the newness, the message. Um, we thank you for leading and guiding us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for a demonstration of your power and authority in our lives that we get to see you work things out in, in different ways, ways that we will never, we would never uh, expect, Lord God. Um, we just thank you, Lord God, that you are an ever-present Lord, that we don't have to go seeking you. You are here with us. And so uh, I turn over this call to you, Holy Spirit, so that you can um, lead and guide and and, and rest, Lord God, we can find rest in you in this day and in, in the rest of this week. We just thank you, Lord, for all and everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord God. Amen. All right. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about a little bit more about witnessing. And I shared um, this weekend a message on witnessing and seeds. And, and so I'm just going to be extending some of what the Lord has, has shown me since then. So this was a few days ago. So I'm just going to share some of the things that he's uh, shared with me uh, a few days ago on uh, witnessing. So I'm going to be coming out of Luke 9. I'm looking over here because that's where my notes are. <laughs> I can't remember what chapter. Luke 9 verses 51 through 56. And I'm going to be reading from the ESV uh, version. Um, so so Luke 9, I'm sorry, Luke 9, 51 through 56. All right, ESV. So um, when the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered the village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, 
do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them and they went on to another village. Father, I just ask that you will uh, give us your spirit of wisdom and understanding and unlock what these words say as it apply to each of our lives. And as we go through our, our lives this week as, as workers, as parents, as colleagues, as family members, we pray that this message on witnessing may hit us a little bit differently, Lord, and, and show us what it is that you want to reveal in each of our lives, Lord God. Amen. Yo, so when I um, first came across this, you know, a lot of times when we hear the story of the Samaritan, a lot of people, you, you know, you, they're familiar with the story of the Good Samaritan, right? Um, but this is, this happens uh, at a time after the transfiguration, after the Lord had been um, healing and healing a boy with unclean spirit, and after Peter confessed who Jesus was. Um, this happening, this is happening. Um, oh, I can't get on Facebook. I'm sorry, I'm hearing folks are saying they can't, they're on hold on the phone and they've got music and they can't get on the Facebook. I don't know what's happening. Well, let me just see, can't get into Facebook or Zoom. Okay, let me see if what's happening here technical difficulties and I can't leave my friends out. <laughs> Y'all bear with me. Let's see what's happening. This is what happens when you're on live, y'all. So, you know, that that is what it is. So let me just make sure. Uh, let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Oh. Let's see what is going on. I'm on hold on the phone and music. Let's see. This is this is one of those like, listen, just bear with me. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I'm getting all kinds of notifications that people cannot get in and they're on hold on the music and they can't get into Zoom. Oh, but you can see me. Okay, if you can see me on Facebook, we're gonna be all right. I don't know why what's happening with uh with Zoom, the Zoom channel right now. But let me just let me just keep it moving, okay? All right, if you're in the um if you're in the Facebook group. <laughs> Just bear with me. I'm sorry, y'all. All right. They're watching me on Facebook. Got it. Uh, all right. So this might be a situation where he just wants me to be teaching y'all this morning. <laughs> I ain't going to fight it. All right. All right. All right. So let me keep going. So I was coming out of Luke, um, I was coming out of Luke 9 verses 51 through 56. And just for the sake of refreshing, let me just go back and read it again. So when the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his, when his disciples, James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But when he turned and rebuked them, and they, but he turned and rebuked them and then went on to another village. That's the word. <laughs> That's the word. So, um, so why, uh, you know, why was this, this was happening again, I was saying this was happening after a time that the Lord had been doing some things in the land. So I mentioned that, um, that the transfiguration had happened and healing had taken place, but I was asking the Lord, like, what does this mean for us? So just going back, um, when the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, I meaning he was focused, <laughs> okay? He was focused on what it, he set his face, right? He was focused on what he had to do next. And yet even in, even in um, this time period where he was focused on what he needed to do next, 
he, the Lord took some time out to teach us all a couple lessons about witnessing, about obedience, okay? About authority, about power. So I wanna share a couple of things because many of us are on um, a journey right now. Many of us are um, feeling that tug in our heart where we wanna witness more. We wanna show up more. We wanna do more things for the Lord, okay? And what he is showing and, and saying right now, the first thing is that just modeling, modeling Jesus is being focused on what he's asked you to do. Focus on where he's sending you. Don't be distracted. Focus on what he's sending, sending you to do. And so in this situation, here you have the Lord setting his face to go to Jerusalem because he was, he was focused on, on his end game. He knew what was coming and he was focused on that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, think about where they were going. So why did he go into Samaritan village? We know from historical um, records and we know um, from just studying the Bible that the Jewish people and the Samaritans, they didn't exactly get along, <laughs> okay? So think about now he is focused, but he is he is passing, passing through essentially hostile territory right? It wasn't a friendly place. Like, you know, going into a Samaritan village, why would he choose? Even though he is focused on his end goal, he was still passing through what was a hostile territory. And then the other thing I realized was when the Lord said um, in verse 54, and when his disciples, James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But the Lord, he turned Okay, this is Jesus, turned and rebuked them. He rebuked James and John. Because in this situation, it called for mercy, not judgment. And I'm telling you, there are many of us who are in a position right now on our jobs, in our communities, in our families, as parents, as people who are a uh, feeling that tug in our heart. Lord, we want to just do more. We want to serve you more. And he's telling you, look, you're, you need to be focused, but you're going to be put through some hostile territory. And when you get through these hostile territory, your response is mercy, not judgment. It's mercy, not judgment. I thought this was so profound because a lot of times when we think about how, you know, how do you want to witness? How do you want to show up? You know, before this, this call, like I understand, look, I know there's, there's a, there's dings and pings going on right now. Amen. They're standing. <laughs> yes. Amen. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me, women of God, listen to what I'm telling you right now, because we are in a season where there's a lot of us who who feel that tug and we 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 want we want so much to honor the lord we want so much to to pour out in our communities and our family we want so much to lift people up we want so much to be transformed y'all we don't want to live the way we've been living we don't want to do the things we've been doing we have such a hunger and the lord is showing up in in all of these amazing encounters and and all these uh, opportunities are showing up for us to go out and and preach and teach and witness. And every Monday and every Tuesday, we come on here as a group and we're witnessing, meaning the women that show up here and the men that are in the, in the Facebook group and they're pouring into the chat and they're talking about how good God is. That is a witness. They're sharing their journey. And it doesn't mean that it's always easy, y'all. It doesn't mean that it's it's perfection. It just means that we are living out our lives the best way we can with the help of the Holy Spirit. And we are witnessing through our lives. We're modeling our lives. We're living this thing out in front of other people that is witnessing. And he's telling all of us that we need to be focused on what he told us to do. Focus on the journey. Don't get blindsided. Don't get distracted. There's so much distraction. Where people want to witness, but they want to witness and in, in ways that are outside the scope. If God told you to witness to one person, witness to that one person, don't look for the 500 because he will send you more when you're ready. So be focused on what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. But mu you must understand that he's preparing you to go into hostile territory. 
And in the same way that he sent messengers ahead, in the same way that he's preparing that path, he will do the same for you. You're not doing this by yourself. I thank you, Lord. I, when I went back and I looked at this and I thought, why? Why does the word say he sent messengers ahead? Why did he need to do that? He's, he's activating us to do the same thing, y'all. We're the messengers being sent ahead. And we're going to be sent into some hostile territory. You're going to be put in situation that's uncomfortable. You're going to have to talk to people who don't believe there's a God. You're going to have to talk to people who worship creation and not the creator. You're going to have to your, talk to your own family members. We're going to bring back to memory things you did 20 years ago, 15 years ago. You can't talk to me about Jesus because look at what you did. Are you ready for that? You're going to be put in hostile territory. And yet the word tells us that when you're in these situations, it's not judgment, it's mercy. Are you ready for that? And so, man, we cannot do this without the Holy Spirit. It is impossible. And that's what he's showing. That's what he's showing me today. Y'all, I, I encourage you, y'all, the best thing that has happened for me, probably, I will say in my entire life has been sharing my love for Jesus with y'all. This is the most fulfilling time. I am always excited. I can talk about Jesus for hours. The women can, the women in the group can tell you, the men in the group can tell you. I can talk to you about Jesus for hours. But just talking about Jesus, that's just one version. That's just words. How are you living that life? How are you modeling it? How are you using the spaces that you're in? Because it's not always a sermon. Sometimes it's just the way you show up. That's your witness. You know, last, uh, I think it was this weekend, might have been Saturday, I shared something, I pulled something, and I put something on social media that talked about how much I love Jesus. And I, it was a short, and I dropped it everywhere. Because again, at this point, listen, I am fully yielded. This is, this is witnessing. Okay? And I put it out on the social media streets and a family member asked me if I was sure I wanted to share this post on a channel that had um, thousands of connections or wouldn't have been better for me to put it in a channel where I had hundreds of connections. Y'all are gonna face the same test. Wouldn't it be better if you just kept it quiet on the low that you follow Jesus? Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be better if you witnessed in a smaller space? Why are you telling everybody? Why are you speaking up more? Why are you inviting people to a prayer group? Why are you, why are you sharing books you've learned? Why are you sharing sermons and songs? Wouldn't it be better if you keep that to yourself? And I'm sharing this. This is going to come from folks closer to you but you still have to respond in mercy, not judgment. So my response had to be, I've got to tell everybody about him. I've got to tell everybody about my Lord. You've got to know who you're dealing with when you're talking to me. You've got to know that you're, you're coming into a, a whole different relationship, a whole different level. You've got to know who you're dealing with. You, you've got to be able to witness to the Lord at all times. What does that mean? It means there is no time where I'm going to curse God. And it doesn't matter what's happening around me. It doesn't matter how confused, confusing things are, how chaotic things are. It doesn't matter how unclear things are. There's no time I'm going to, I'm going to turn against my Lord. He's done too much for me. And if he does nothing more, I'm so blessed. Witnessing with mercy and not judgment. It's the way that you speak to your children. It's the way that you live out your life in front of them. Sometimes it's not a sermon. Sometimes it's the way you love other people. When they hate you, 
Can you sit in a room in hostile territory and still, still show mercy? Witnessing. Amen. God is so amazing. And listen, he's going to use all of us if we're willing and if we're obedient, if our heart is in the right posture. Well, witnessing is so important. I want to share something else that the Lord was showing me this weekend, and it is about our men. And as women, as women, how are we witnessing to the men that are in our lives? No more thoughts and prayers. It's time for us to witness. And how do you witness? How do you witness as a woman to the men that are in your lives? Your fathers, your sons, your husbands, your colleagues, your community folks. How are you witnessing to them? And so I've urged us as we're going through the rest of the month of September, that ladies, let us witness to our men. We witness on our knees before the Father when we're praying, when we're lifting them up and lifting up their own spirits, when we're praying over them. We're asking for God to release, release things for them, to glorify himself through you to them so that whatever it is they stand in need of, you're gonna be praying for that, for that man, whoever it is in your life. Witnessing in a way that you're not passing judgment on the men that are in your life. He should have did this, he should have said that. Witnessing in a way that's encouraging and supportive. Witnessing in that way, the men that you work with to let them know I've got you, I've got you. Witnessing that way. Yes, it's gonna be hostile territory because some of these men don't wanna hear what you have to say because you've been hostile. You've been judgmental. You've been cruel. You've passed judgment. And now, now I'm asking us to just show some mercy to the men that are in your life. Position your heart posture, witness that way. Why will a man want to pray with you if you've been cursing him five minutes before? So let's shift to that. Let's think about how we witness. It's not through judgment. You know what else came out of this, this chapter in Luke 9? Is that the Lord gave authority and power to James and John. If you go back and read the word, you'll understand what this power and authority is. This was before the Holy Spirit was fully released, right? Because Jesus was still here. And so he had given them, I would say, temporary power and authority, but he gave them power and authority. And if you go back and see the word, the, the word says in 54, in verse 54, this is what James, when James and John saw these people in hostile territory, okay? Their words were, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven? And do you want us? So they were fully aware of the authority that the Lord gave them because they had been doing some things. Do you want us? We have authority by the Holy Spirit to do some things. You have authority by the Holy Spirit to destroy some things, to break some chains, to destroy some yokes, to lift people up, to teach, to heal. You have authority. If you have a, a, a cousin or a niece or a friend who's going through issues, you have authority. You can come before the throne of God and lift up those prayers. You can, you can do that. You have authority to do that. So don't give away the authority that you have thinking there is someone else can do it. It's you, if you're willing and obedient. You have the authority to do that. But as a witness, don't just pray for yourself and the people in your household. Maybe pick a different family and pray for them. You don't have to go advertise it. You don't have to go, hey, sis, I'm praying for y'all and your entire family. Tell me what your needs are. You don't even have to do that. 
Many of you have prayer closets. Go in your closet, take a family name and just focus on one family a week. Witnessing. Because you're not just witnessing in front of people, you're witnessing in front of heaven. You're showing the Lord that you're faithful. As you start to ask for more, as you start, start to ask for more and more, this is how it, this is how it goes. You've got to be faithful. He is faithful to us. We are not faithful to him. If he sends you someone as an assignment, someone who's assigned and aligned to you, are you connected to that person? What kind of witness are you, what, what kind of witnessing are you doing? Are you taking the time to get to know each other as people or are you just showing up preaching? What kind of witness are you, are you being? Like think, I'm thinking about all these things. Amen. Amen. I don't know why the technology failed this morning. I think it's because the Lord just needed me to share these things with you. And so even in that, I thank you, Lord, that technology doesn't work at a certain time and a certain period so that your word goes forth. Because as I'm sharing, I'm sharing things that I'm learning for myself. But I'm still filled with joy. Jesus is so amazing. But I can't keep it for myself. I can't keep the good news for myself. You know, I heard a message a couple of days ago from Prophet Lovey. And he talked about salvation as a gift. And that many of us are treating salvation like it's something we earned. No, it's a gift. It's a gift. And just sitting in that, knowing that the Lord loves you so much, that he gave you, he gave his life for you. And that we just want the best for each other. And because the Lord has been so good to me, it doesn't mean that life is perfect. It doesn't mean that there's health issues. It doesn't mean that there aren't money issues. It doesn't mean that life is a lifing. But he's taken you out of enough things that you know that you can speak confidently about how good he is. He's given you enough so that you can witness to other people and not just through your words. Maybe it's through money. Maybe you got to go pay somebody else's bill and not judge them for it. Maybe you, you know, you bring some food to a neighbor. Maybe you just go knock on the door and, and see how your neighbor is doing. That's witnessing. That's just showing up. That's just, you know, maybe you're just checking on a friend. How you doing? No judgment, just mercy. Back in the day, we used to go to visit, remember, you know, sick homes, old sick home, if you were at a, at a, in a church family, <laughs> you'd go visit the sick at the hospital, and I don't even know that churches are doing that anymore. It's all about the program. Witnessing, witnessing on a level that people, when they see you and you're the salt and the light, but when they see you, they know they can, you're accessible. Right? Amen. So Lord, that's that's what he gave me this morning. I'm going to close this out in prayer because that all that's what he gave me, and that's that. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for reminding us of what it takes to be a witness, Lord God. And we thank you that we have the Holy Spirit. Your word says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I know with all my heart, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That we're to bring good news to the poor. That you've given us authority. that you want us to show mercy and not judgment. That we are to be focused on the work that you've called us to do, focus on what you've asked us to do, focus on the things we've agreed to do. 
we come into agreement with everything that heaven says about us. Father, we destroy every lie, every chain, every, every, every thought that says that we are not qualified to speak or witness on your behalf. We destroy those now. So many have been told by so many others that they're not qualified to speak or witness about you. So many have, and that is not true. We know, Lord, we know, Lord, that with the power of the Holy Spirit, that we can witness to others and, and draw men back to you. We're in the business of saving souls. Father, we thank you that this day gives us an opportunity as we go out into our jobs or we talk to our children, as we go outside to our neighbors, Lord God, that you are reaching these people through us. Purify our hearts, Lord God, so that we can represent you in a way that shows mercy. Father, we repent for every single sin, Lord God, every iniquity, things that we've done that we know of, things that we've done that we don't even know of, Lord God, so that we can be prepared and purified to do this work of witnessing. I pray for hearts that have not yet surrendered to you that they will, that you're, that you're tugging on every heart, that every single person watching this live or watching the replay or wherever they are, everyone who's feeling the tug to do more for God, that they will yield to you, that they will surrender to you, that they'll understand that the agenda is yours. The agenda is to bring more souls to the kingdom of heaven. That is it. Father, pour out a fresh oil on all of us today. Give us the, the spirits of wisdom and understanding. Give us courage to be bold. But Lord God, show us how to have mercy as you have mercy on us. Show us how to have mercy on those around us. I pray for all of the men in our lives. I pray over every single man who is watching or listening, every single man who is here today, here tomorrow. I pray over husbands and cousins and brothers and sons, uncles and colleagues. Lord, I pray that today they will see you in a different way. Father, we know that men are hurting. I ask, Lord God, for you to forgive us as women. We've turned our backs. We've asked them for things they cannot give us. We've broken hearts. We've told them not to speak up. As mothers, as mothers of men, we are molding them to be hard heart, to not know the love of Jesus as if you only love women. We know that's not true. So we ask, Lord God, that you will forgive us, those of us, all of us, who've not been supportive of our brothers. I pray this week, Lord God, that you will pour out a fresh oil on the men in our lives. Oh, Lord God, I pray that even our witness to men this week will be different, that we'll be softer when we need to be, that we'll listen more, that we'll pray with them. And even if we can't pray with them, we'll pray for them. We thank you for the character and the strength of man. We know that none of us are perfect. We know that there are many that are broken, but Lord, we don't want to break their spirits. So I pray over the brokenhearted men, those who've not achieved what they, they thought they would. I pray for the men that are leading in our churches, the men that are deacons and ministers and bishops and whatever the role is that you've given to them, that Lord, they will focus on you. I pray that you'll give them the strength and the courage to focus on you. 
and for the men that are in ministry, for their families to come and support them so that they can finish this work. I pray for the men on our jobs, whether they're our bosses or our colleagues. I pray for the men at every single level that today there'll be an encounter with you. I pray that you'll touch every single man, that you'll protect them, Lord God. Many don't know what to say. I pray that you will just show up today, Lord God, through us women as witnesses, to remind them, Lord God, that <laughs> there is still mercy. Thank you, Lord, for this platform and this opportunity to speak and to share your words. Go with us now, Holy Spirit. We cannot do this without you. And touch every heart and ear and eye that's willing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That ends today's live. That ends today's live. May God bless you. Come back on Tuesday night. Amen.